Does Papa have a name? Skipper. 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 Okay. Skipper. Okay. Okay. Well, good morning. Glad to have you all at worship this morning. Welcome to Friendship. If you're a guest or a visitor, we're so glad to have you in worship today. If you're watching in our online community, we are glad to have you here as well. And so we hope today is a worshipful experience. So prepare your hearts and minds as we get started. Uh, throughout the week, there are a number of ways that you can connect with us. Uh, you can connect by giving. If you're giving in person this morning, there are two uh, boxes at the back you can give as you go. You can give online at friendshipsturgis.com slash give, and you can connect with our small groups in the same way. Uh, so continue to do those things. Uh, we will be back together uh, this evening at 6 online, and so you can connect with us in that way. So please check that out. Uh, likewise, uh, if you're coming at a later time, we have 11 a.m. service as well. So... Uh, so thank you all for being here this morning, and now I'm going to turn it over to Skipper. Hey kids, thanks for coming today. Today I want to talk to you guys about something I read in Exodus 20. In Exodus 20 in the Bible, it says you shall not make idols. I saw that and I said, God, I won't make idols. And I told God that I would pray more and that I would read my Bible and I would give him my time and I would idolize him as my God. But I have a story to tell. It was my birthday. What? And my parents got me this really cool game called Minecraft. Have you heard of it? It's so much fun. It's a really good game. It helps with my hand-eye coordination. It helps with my multitasking. And it's fun. I started playing Minecraft all the time. I wanted to get better and better and better. But I started playing when I was supposed to be reading my Bible. And when I was supposed to be praying. And I would play all the time. I played at night, I played in the morning, I played after school, I played on weekends, I got so good at Minecraft, but I did something bad. One Sunday, I told my parents I was sick. I wasn't sick, but I wanted to stay home and play my game, because it's fun. But that was bad. And after about an hour of playing, I felt really guilty. So when my parents got home, I told them the truth. The truth's good. They got really mad, and they punished me. But God, I knew God was more disappointed in me. Because I had made that game my idol. That wasn't good. I never thought that I could make something my idol, but I did. So today I want to tell you kids, don't make things your idol. It's very easy. Games are fun, but God is more fun. God loves you. Okay? All right, guys, thanks for joining Skipper today. Let's pray. Bow your heads. Dear Lord, I pray that we would not make other things our idol. I pray that we would always keep you as number one in our life, that we would give you our time, that we would idolize you for the wonderful, amazing God you are. Amen. You shall not make for yourself an idol or any likeness of what is in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the water under the earth. You shall not worship them or serve them, for I, the Lord, your God, am a jealous God, 
visiting your inquity of fathers and children on the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing loving kindness to thousands of those who love me and keep my commandments. sing a song this morning that uh, it's, it's challenging to me uh, as far as its message goes. I found it a couple of weeks ago and I really liked it, but I started coming up with excuses not to sing it in church. Uh, and the main one was that it's stepping on my toes. Uh, I had somebody lined up to sing this morning and they uh, texted me yesterday and they're sick, so God had other plans. He wanted me to sing the song, I feel like. Uh, so it's, it's a toe stepper, um, but I'll, I want y'all to know I don't, I'm not up here like I've got it all together. Um, so it's, it's really a song that I need more than anyone probably. It's called Clear the Stage. Clear the stage and set the sound and lights ablaze. If that's the measure you must take to crush the idols Jerk the pews and all the decorations too Until the congregation's few and have revival Tell your friends that this is where the party ends Until you're broken for your sins and can't be social Seek the Lord and wait for what he has in store And know that great is your reward So just be hopeful Cause you can sing all you want to you can sing all you want to you can sing all you want to and still get it wrong worship is more than a song Take a break from all the plans that you have made. Sit at home alone and wait for God to whisper. Beg him please to open up his mouth and speak. And pray for real upon your knees until they blister. Shine the light on every corner of your life. Till the pride and lust and lies are in the open. Then read the word and put to test the things you've heard. Till your heart and soul are stirred and rocked and broken. Cause you can sing all you want to. Yes, you can. Sing all you want to, you can. Sing all you want to and still get it wrong. Oh, worship is more than a song. We must not worship something that's not even worth it. Clear the stage, make some space for the one who deserves it. Anything I put before my God is an idol. Anything I want with all my heart is an idol. 
Anything I can't stop thinking of is an idol. I can't sing all I want to, yes I can't sing all I want to, and we can't sing all we want to, and we can't sing all we want to. Clear the stage and set the sound and lights ablaze. That's the measure you must take to crush the idols. I was watching TV the other day, and this show comes on with these religious fanatics. They were crazy. Well, you would think they were crazy if you didn't understand their culture and their religion. See, that's just the thing. They were worshipers of idols, and they took things to extremes. They painted their bodies. They wore these ridiculous costumes. They chanted. They danced. They, they made sacrifices to their idols. They had built these enormous temples to worship their idols in. It seemed like their entire existence climaxed into this one scenario, this one over-the-top act of worship. You don't really relate, do you? Let's try it again. I was watching TV the other day, and this show comes on with these religious fanatics. They were crazy. See, that's just the thing. They were worshipers of idols, and they took things to extremes. They painted their bodies. They wore these ridiculous costumes. They chanted, they danced, they, they made sacrifices to their idols. They had built these enormous temples to worship their idols in. It seemed like their entire existence climaxed into this one scenario, this one over-the-top act of worship. Idol worship. It's not just about golden calves anymore. If you have your copy of God's Word, open up your Bible this morning to Exodus chapter 20. We'll be looking at uh, our second in the, in the series of this Ten Commandments look that we've been looking at. And so as we look at this this morning, we'll be centering on verses 4 through 6. Uh, I really appreciate uh, the fact that we have kids and, and leaders who are willing to read. I believe Tinley read this week, so thank you, Tinley, for reading this week. We're glad to have you doing that, and that's a great way for our kiddos to serve and to play a part in worship. So thank you, Tinley, for doing that this morning. Well, the first thing we've got to figure out in our lives, which you've seen this morning, is thematically we've been talking about idols. Everybody was talking about it during the morning prior to me standing up here. Skipper told the kids about it. Uh, the songs were about it. Everything was about it this morning, so we could illustrate or bring that up this morning. So what is an idol? An idol is defined as a physical or material image or form representing a reality or being considered divine, and thus an object of worship. In the Bible, various terms were used to re re refer to them, or idolatry, or image, or graven, or carved, or cast, or statue, or abomination. Both Testaments condemn idols, but with the idols, the Old Testament expresses more concern than the New Testament, probably reflecting the fact that the threat of idolatry was more pronounced by the people of the Old Testament. 
we can look at the people of the Old Testament and we can see and observe that even those Israelites who were, uh, who were devoted to God in the sense of their culture and their practice and spiritual means, they still had household idols. They still pulled from other religions. They still pulled from other people. As they were conquered, as they were exiled, as they made those decisions that led them astray from God, they adopted a lot of things that were culturally acceptable. And, 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 and in that, this was a very important message to those people who follow God. Do not make idols. So point number one, don't make idols. Verse four, it brings this into focus. You shall not make for yourself an idol or any likeness of what is in heaven or above the earth or on the earth, beneath or in the water under the earth. That very much lays it out plain and clear. The Word of God says don't make an idol. Don't put anything before God. Don't worship anything other than the God that we know, the God of salvation, the God of redemption and forgiveness. Do not worship anything and put anything of prominence in our lives. So, so idol worship is anything that we put before God and we worship. In that clip a minute ago, you saw that, that it could be sports related. You know, it could be, we get so wrapped up in things like that. But secondly, what are some idols that we can define this morning? So I had, I had a number of people let me know what they believed idols were. And so here are some of their answers. Sports, politics, material things, technology, people, money, time, themselves, their kids, church, exercise, jobs, sex, food, more and more. All of those things can be idols. All of those things can be put before worshiping God. But what is worship? What is worshiping God? How do we worship God? Do we do it just with the songs that we sing or do we do it with our lives? Do we do it on a Sunday morning or Sunday evening or is it something we do each and every day in each and every moment? Worship needs to be defined as we are not going to worship anything but God. So thirdly, we look at this and we say, you know what? I, I believe we don't need to worship these idols. Verse 5 says, You should not worship them or serve them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children, on the third and the fourth generations of those who hate me. So, idols, worshiping idols, not worshiping idols, it sets a precedence, doesn't it? It sets a precedence when... When, when parents or leaders of a home think that it's okay to do everything and anything and put that in prominence before God. Because whether or not we believe it or not, we set a precedence for those around us. If we work more than we worship, if we exercise more than we worship, if we do anything more than we worship, then it can become our idol very quickly. Because we know that we can amass any amount of money. We can get as many things as we want. We can have all the things we desire, yet still not have God in our lives as He should be. We can worship and have a thousand and one things in our minds as, as important, but it does not pale in comparison to who God should be in our lives. Do not serve or worship Anyone but the Almighty in our lives is the message this morning. So fourthly, we see there's, there's a call to the loving kindness that He brings in the commandments. Verse 6 says this, But showing loving kindness to thousands, to those who love me and keep my commandments. Loving kindness. How can you and I love? How can you and I serve? How can you and I represent God as we should, if He does not hold that place in our hearts and lives that He ought to. How can you and I tell another person about Jesus Christ when we ourselves place these idols before 
God Almighty. When we place all things... See, see, I, I could have thrown in there and I should have thrown in there. I think I left one out. What about hunting and fishing? Can we put that before God? What about going to ball games? What about investing in other things? Can we put those things before God and set a pattern in our own lives that lead us down the wrong way? Or set a pattern in our lives that lead others down the wrong way? See, we quickly can place other things before God and create an idol in itself. And you might say, well, I don't have any just, just little figures in here that you see in your mind and you think that those things are just idols. But an idol is anything we place before God that then takes on or supersedes that place where God should only exist in our lives. The people, during this time, the people of God, the people who had been delivered, who Moses had brought out, they already had that seed in their heart to where they were thinking, I'm going to create an image to worship. What they had observed is in when they were in bondage, when they were enslaved, how all of these gods were worshipped and how those gods somehow created comfort for them or somehow created or gave them something. In their mind, they believed that was important to have something they could see right in front of them. So what are some of those examples of that? Exodus 32, 1 through 8. Exodus 32, 1 through 8, you'll remember it like this. This is the golden calf. This is Aaron. Aaron was, I guess, asked to create this golden calf out of all the jewelry, the gold, and the, the fine things that they had and created this. What was their purpose to have the golden calf? Was their purpose just to have something where they could store all of their, their gold and metal and all that in there? No, their objective was to worship this golden calf, was to offer sacrifices or offerings to this golden calf. They, in other words, were symbolically saying, this is most important. Where was Moses during that time? Was he sleeping in his tent, or what was he doing? At the very time that Moses was up on the mountain, the Ten Commandments were being given to him, and he was communing with God, in the valley below, this was going on. So we see in this passage, and just a short cha few chapters later, in Exodus 32, verses 1 through 8, that this was going on. Well, you say, well, okay, th th that's, that's an isolated incident, right? We can think in our mind, well, that's just an isolated incident. You know, sometimes in our own minds, we can rationalize why we do what we do, Right? Well, I'm just going to go do this for this day. Or maybe I'm just not going to go to church this Sunday. Or it's not so bad if I miss here and now. Well, when we start down that rationalizing and, 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 and using that to say, this is why I am doing this or doing these things in my life, then we begin to offer excuses for why we think these things are more important than God. Another example in Scripture is Leviticus 19.4. Leviticus 19.4 says this. It says, Do not turn to idols or make yourselves molten gods. I am the Lord your God. He says, look, I am the Lord. I am to have all your love, devotion. I, I am to be followed. Nothing is to come before me. So if you and I say in our heart of hearts, that Jesus is Lord and Savior of our lives, then we have to place Him in that position in our lives without compromise, right? In other words, we've got to say, God, whatever is in my life that is keeping my mind off of You, that is keeping my gaze off of You, that is keeping my focus off of You, that is keeping my devotion off of You, that is keeping from my plan not being your plan in my life, then I've got to do what? I've got to change that. I've got to turn to God. I've got to put these things to the curb. What happens when you don't put things to the curb that are spoiled? Do they smell better after a few days? How many of you have spoiled food that you, you, you just leave out 
and you just leave it there. And you say, you know what? In a couple of days, I'll leave this out. In a couple of days, it'll be even better than it is right now. And you go over there and you lift up the little top on it and you say, oh man, and it about chokes you, right? So then you put the top down and you keep leaving it on the counter for a few more days, right? Then you go back and it, and it smells that much better, right? It just automatically gets better, doesn't it? We do that sometimes in our lives with what we follow and what we put before God. We say, man, this is so much better. This is so much... Wait, something's not right with this. Something's not right. And we have to figure that out, that we are not to put these things before God. And it can be all of those things I mentioned, but maybe you in your life have an idol that wasn't mentioned. And you can't say, well, the pastor didn't call my idol out. He didn't call what I said, so I am good. So right there and here and now, you're thinking, you know what, I've got away with this. But the reality behind an idol is this. You can't hide from God Almighty. You might could hide from your spouse from your friend, from your family, from your coworker, from your neighbor, anybody and anyone you could probably put on a show for. But you can't hide from the one who knows your heart. And if you and I are followers of the Most High God, then we've got to really understand that we can't hide from Him. 1 Corinthians 10, 7 says, Do not be idolaters, as some of them were, as it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and stood up to play. So what does this mean about this? Don't, do not be idolaters. This was a case that was given. As the Israelites sat down, which is a deliberate act, they ate and drank at the idol feast of the calves at Horeb. So the Corinthians were in danger of idolatry by an act, though not professing in worship an idol as the Israelites. So, does it matter how we rationalize what, what we put before God, or does it matter that we're putting something before God? Does it matter that we can somehow offer a good excuse, you know? We, we're good at offering excuses, aren't we? We can do that, right? And we can make ourselves feel good about what we do. But at the end of the day, we are not ones that can pull the blindfold over God and say, God... <laughs> You didn't see that, did you? Or, God, I, I know I haven't been to church in months. Or, God, I know I haven't read my Bible in, like, forever. Or, God, you know, I haven't prayed to you in a long time. But, God, you know that it's important, God. I'll pick up with you, God, after deer season. I'll pick up with you, God, after I get through with this place in my life. God, I'll, I'll pick up with you after I get the promotion, God. I'll start praying and doing what I ought to do. God, I'll, God, I'll just reconnect with you at a later time, God. Just, just stay with me, God. Don't give up on me, God. I'm going to do all of these things. And then God says, what's most important? Am I more important than all of these things in your life? Why do you keep walking away from me when I'm trying to do great things in your life? Why do you keep placing these things before me? So I want to ask you, on this morning, what idols have you made? And you might say, well, Pastor, I don't have these and these and these idols. And we start labeling those off. How many of you have ever done that? How many of you have ever compared sins with people, right? Anybody ever done that? You said, you know what, I'm not as bad as they are. Or maybe you've punched somebody this morning or during a sermon before and said, I wish so-and-so was here. They need to hear this. The reality is it's so easy to put things before God. What's harder is to put God before things. It's to make that stand in our life. What idols have you made? I want you to think about that. Secondly, how have you neglected your faith since March 2020? You say, well, what happened in March 2020? Think about it. 
That means in March 2020, that's when all things quarantine and all things corona came into our, our uh, vernacular and speech and everything else, right? So how have you neglected him during this time? Your faith, how have you placed that on hold? See, commandments are intended for our growth, for abundant life. But I want us to understand, omitting them is not an option. Looking at the Bible and saying, well, no longer do I have to follow these commands. I'm good. I've reached a point in my life where I know what I need to know, and I've read enough, and I've been to church enough, and I've learned enough, and I'm good. Because that's a very faulty place and way of thinking, that we feel like we've reached a point where so many of us say, I'm good, I've got it figured out. That really says, you know what, God? I don't need you. Because there's always more to learn, amen? There's always more growth that needs to happen in my life and your life. There's always more that God can do with us. As Jeremy said a minute ago, Sometimes we've got to clear the stage, right? We've got to allow for God to take on a greater part of our life. So what does Scripture leave us with? It leaves us with the understanding that idol worship is prohibited. That faith is difficult. That in difficult situations, those are the things that shapes us and transforms our spiritual lives. So saying no to worshiping anything but God transforms your heart and mind. It puts you in the right perspective in Christ Jesus. It gives you the ability for God to do what only He can in your life and in my life. So fourthly, don't compromise your faith, but seek after God with all that you have. All that you have. What would it look like in your life if you sought after God with everything within you? What would it look like? How many of you remember times when you have given something all that you have? It looks drastically different than what most people do on a given week, doesn't it? Most people say, well, I did enough to get through whatever I was doing. What would it look like for you to do that with all of your heart, mind, soul, and strength? To love God beyond that which you have placed before Him. What would it look like? You know, there's, there's a lot of songs and a lot of lyrics that probably come to mind. And throughout my time in life, there's a lot of music that comes to mind. I think of a lot of hymns and songs, whether they're songs from when I was growing up, or they're songs from times in my life which have spoken to me. Now, many of you may be familiar, but maybe you're not familiar with the Christian artist Andy Minio. He has a song called You Can't Stop Me. And while that might not be your, your great, uh, you know, old-time religion music, it's a very poignant, as it says here in the lyrics. It says, I, I got two choices when I do this, make moves or make excuses. It says, if you know what I'm talking about, then you've got me. My biggest enemy is me, and even I can't stop me. Who's our biggest enemy a lot of times? It's our way of thinking. It's our thought. It's what we put before God. And if we look at the right perspective, and if we adhere to that, then we are kept on the trajectory that we need to of spiritual growth that lasts and lasts. So I'm going to ask you this morning. If you've made an idol, if you've placed anything before God, if you've compromised your faith in any way, I'm going to ask you to lay it down. I'm going to ask you to sacrificially give it to God that He might hold that place in your life which He has long needed to hold. 
Why is the world the way it is today? Why are our lives the way they are today? Why have we given prominence to anything but God in our lives today? Why don't we let God do what only He can in our hearts and minds? Why don't we stop worshiping other things? Heavenly Father, God, we come this morning, God, we are grateful to be in Your house. God, we are grateful to worship You, God. In this moment in time, God, we ask that You, God, You just break our hearts, God. You help us to be real and honest before You, God. Heavenly Father, so many of us are good at putting up fronts or, or showing others what we want them to see, but God, we can't hide from You, God. God, we can't fool You. God, You see our heart. You see our intentions. You see the idols we have made, God. God, help us to, to lay those aside that we might have more of You and less of us. Father God, I know that it points out our weaknesses, but God, when we are weak, You are strong, God. God, help us to love You with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength. God, help us to love our neighbors. God, help us to love our enemies. God, help us to have the right perspective of heart that when we leave this place, God, there's nothing holding us back. Heavenly Father, God, forgive us where we fall short so often of that mark, God, that we put things before you that never should have been there before you. Heavenly Father, we read the book of Exodus and we see in these verses that they made a golden calf and we think that's so far-fetched. But God, anything that's put before you in worship, God, is an idol. So God, just break our hearts, God. In this moment in time, help us to come before you and give all that we have to a God who's given all that he has. Thank you, Jesus, for your sacrifice. Thank you, Jesus, for the cross and the grave. Thank you for rising from that grave and giving us the freedom that we so desperately need from the sin that so easily entangles us. God, just work in our hearts and minds in these next moments. It's in your name we pray. Amen. We're so grateful that you attended church here this morning. We're glad to have friends and family here this morning. It's so much easier to talk to a group of people. But the thing I don't know and haven't figured out yet is what kind of faces you're making underneath those masks. So I don't really know what you're thinking or, or, you know, or, or if you're eating your lunch and I just don't see it or, or whatever's going on. So we're grateful to have you with us, whether you're here in person or online. And we are grateful that you're here in worship on today. I pray that you take this message and you really let it marinate in your hearts. If you said this morning, man, I just really wanted to walk down front. I really had something going on in my heart. Don't leave this place without 
contacting one of us or making and stopping us, however it is, or contacting us later. If you're online, you're welcome to call, and we will be glad to talk to you. Just make that before God and get that straight today, because the longer we let something stay, the longer it takes that place in our life that God should take. Uh, well, as we go this morning, do we have someone that has the mic? Yes, Not today? Okay, so I'm, I'm going to ask uh, this morning if Mr. Scarborough back there, if he will pray for us and we'll be done.